Hi, and you're now with the Forerunner Chronicles. All right, everybody, I'd like to welcome you to a special series of the Forerunner Chronicles entitled A Formation of a New World Order. And I assure you, you don't want to miss one part of this series because currently this is an inquiry. This is a question that is at the forefront of the minds of many people within our society with an impending economic collapse in the EU and in the United States of America as well. And with social unrest manifesting itself in many different ways like the Occupy movement, which is currently sweeping through our globe, people really want to know whether or not a new world order could come into existence. People really want to know whether or not globalization could be the reality which we live in in the very near future. And as always, the Bible has all of the answers. Are you ready? Well, let's begin. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning at verse 1, the Bible tells us, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. According to the Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Spirit of God, in reference to the specific time and season dealing with the second coming of Jesus Christ, this information is not something that we need to concern ourselves with because the Bible does not give us this information. However, there has been enough revealed to us in the Holy Scriptures to give us the clear understanding that we know the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. However, when we should be looking for the second coming of Jesus Christ, during the time in which we should be preparing our hearts to meet the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, during the time in which we should be turning our minds to the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, so that by faith in His grace, in His power, we might be liberated from our lying, our backbiting, our stealing, our adultery, our smoking, our alcoholism, all of these shackles that have bound us to the devil. During this time in which we should be looking to have this experience because Jesus is coming, there will be people in this world that will be saying, no, peace and safety, peace and safety. That word peace in the original Greek from whence it was translated gives the connotation that these individuals are saying join together as one for prosperity. And that word safety in the original Greek from which it was translated, means security. So in other words, these individuals are saying, join together as one to ensure our prosperity and our security. Let me make it plain for you. During the time, just prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ, in the last days of this world's existence, which happens to be now, people in our world will be saying, we need interfaith movements. We need an ecumenical movement to bring all faiths together as one. We need a one world economic system. We need a one world government structure to ensure the prosperity and the security of the nations. Have you ever heard anything like that? Funny, I have. And ladies and gentlemen, when they're saying peace and safety, the Bible says that sudden destruction will come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Now, I have two questions that I would like to ask you, and I hope you find them just as interesting as I do. Question number one, is it possible for a woman to be pregnant and not know that she's pregnant? The answer to that question is yes. Now, question number two, which is quite more interesting than the first question. Is it possible for a woman to go into child labor and not know that what she's experiencing at that time is actually child labor? Now, there's several mothers out there that might have several children, and they're shaking their head and saying, no, that is impossible. But the reality of the situation is, is yes, it is possible. And let me share with you how it could be possible by sharing with you this scenario. Let's say, for instance, there was a woman that was pregnant and she went to her doctor and she said to her doctor, doctor, I believe I'm getting ready to go into childbirth. I believe I'm getting ready to have my baby. And her doctor looks her over and says, well, what makes you think that? And she says, well, I felt the baby kicking in my stomach this morning. 
What do you think the doctor would say to her? I hope the doctor would say to her, don't worry, you're not getting ready to go into childbirth. The baby's just letting you know that it's alive and it's healthy. However, when you feel those labor contractions about five minutes apart, then rush to the emergency room because you can know at that time you are getting ready to deliver your child. You see, the reason why that woman did not know whether or not she was going into child labor or not was because she was not familiar with the signs or the indicators that foreshadowed childbirth or that were the harbingers of child delivery. And this is the same situation with these people that will be living here in these last days saying peace and safety. The only reason they'll be saying peace and safety, the only reason they'll be saying we need to all join together as one for our prosperity and our security is because these individuals are not familiar with the signs that indicate a time of deliverance. Or these individuals are willingly ignorant or they are denying that the signs that indicate a time of deliverance are now unfolding. And what are these signs that are the indicators of this time of deliverance? Well, Jesus himself actually answered this question in the book of Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew, the 24th chapter, when Jesus was answering the inquiries of his disciples as to what the signs would be that foreshadowed the destruction of Jerusalem, the end of this world, and his second coming, in verse 4, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places, and all these are the beginnings of sorrows. That word sorrows in the original Greek from whence it was translated means that all of these signs are the beginnings of the labor pangs or the beginnings of the labor contractions. Ladies and gentlemen, when we see nation rise up against nation or races rising up to annihilate other races. We're talking about genocide here. Are you seeing that happen in our world today? And when we see political powers rising up to make war with other political powers, as well as famines and pestilence and earthquakes transpiring all throughout our globe, these all are the signs of a time of deliverance. Have you seen these signs taking place as of today? Well, if you haven't seen them as of yet, Take a look at this. This is recent footage filmed in Africa in which these villagers thought they saw an appearance of the Virgin Mary. 2 Corinthians 11 and 14 tells us, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. This is not special effects. This is a fallen angel, a demonic spirit. Tokyo has announced plans to dump nearly 12,000 tons of radioactive water from the Fukushima plant. Is it really as harmless as the government is making out? Uh, absolutely not, and any other normal circumstances, the release of such volumes of water would be described as catastrophic. There's no concept how to store the radioactive fuel. Um, the plutonium, if it is ingested by a human body, uh, almost certainly leads to the development of cancer. Plutonium is a very, very uh, dangerous and harmful substance which will radiate for many, many, many thousands of years. I'm successfully trying to restore the cooling system at the facility in what is now the worst atomic crisis since Chernobyl. Um, the plutonium, if it is ingested by a human body, uh, almost certainly leads to the development of cancer. Некоторые в Тбилиси считают, что Москва словами Геннадия Онищенко о допуске грузинских вин на российский рынок выкидывает белый флаг перед Грузией, от которой зависит вступление России во Всемирную торговую организацию. Что было сказали по этому поводу? Никакого белого флага нету. Не надейтесь. Ни перед кем никогда мы не склоняли голову. Перед нами склоняли голову все великие державы. И Китай, Япония, Германия, Франция, и том, в том числе и США. А допуск ВИН, я думаю, что здесь проблема в целом общая. Мы 
прекращали допуск на наш рынок любых товаров. И из Молдавии, и из Белоруссии. Поэтому прямой связи да, но Владимир с Вольфович. отношением Грузии и вступлением России в ВТО и проблемами, связанными с каким-то экспортом в Россию, я думаю, нету. Рычагов достаточно у России, чтобы повлиять на Грузию и получить от нее нужное для России решение. С винами, без вин, с таможней, без таможни. Решение будет найдено. Об этом договорятся в Вашингтоне и в Москве. В Брюсселе и в Китае, в Пекине. Только четыре столицы в мире. Вашингтон, Брюссель, Москва, Пекин. Все. Четыре столицы. Больше никто ни на что влиять не может. И лишний игрок в международных отношениях. Четыре столицы всегда договорятся. Обама, представитель Евросоюза, Медведев, представитель Китая. Все, они в четвером договорятся. При этом китайцы приедут в Москву, согласятся с позицией Москвы. Европейцы приедут в Москву, согласятся с позицией Москвы. И американцы приедут в Москву, как Байден сейчас был. И обо всем договорятся. Проблем нет. Все решают только четыре столицы. При этом Вашингтон не имеет будущего. Америка искусственное государство рухнет. Европа старая, так сказать, уже континент, который никакой роли не играет. Китай на пороге взрыва. И остается космическая держава Россия с огромными деньгами, ресурсами и новым оружием, о котором еще никто не знает. Любую часть планеты уничтожим в течение 15 минут. Ни одного взрыва, ни одного, так сказать, всплеска там, луча какого-то лазерного, там, молния. Нет, тихо, спокойненько. Целые континенты будут спать вечным сном. А может вы нам подробнее расскажете, как вы собираетесь это делать? Все остальное. Вот цунами сейчас в Японии. Вы курилы хотели? Вот вы будете разбирать обломки всех ваших зданий. И сдохните все 120 миллионов, если вы еще потребуете курила от нас. Так и все остальные. Пусть подумают о своем будущем. О своем будущем пусть думают. Тоже мне еще грузинские вина и там какие-то наблюдатели. Они хотят, чтобы забыли слово «Грузия» в мире. И будет русско-турецкая граница. Вот подумайте, пускай Сакашвили об этом. Тут цунами будет другое. В другой части Кавказа.